What's your favorite gaming studio? Naughty Dog, Monolith Soft, maybe it's Nintendo themselves. There are so many incredible developers out there that it's pretty hard to choose just one. But there is a particular group of people with a particular set of skills. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. From a particular studio that has caught our attention recently. So much so that we're pretty confident that they are up there with the greatest of all time. The GOATs of the business. That studio is Square Enix and that group of people is Team Asano. When you think of RPGs, you think of Square Enix. Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, Chrono Trigger, even the Super Mario RPG. Any fan of video games worth their salt knows that Square are the unrivaled queens of the Japanese role-playing game. But Square's been keeping up with the Joneses a little bit lately, kind of unfortunately. Final Fantasy has pretty much been an action RPG for over like two decades now. And Dragon Quest XII is also taking the series in a more action oriented direction. So who's keeping that classic torch alive? Where's that spirit of the Super Nintendo golden years? It's with Tomoya Asano and the folks in the Creative Business Unit 2, affectionately referred to by us fans as Team Asano. So video games are undoubtedly works of art and the best and sometimes worst part about art is that it's subjective. We actually struggled with the title of this video because nobody is the best at creating art and we also didn't want to poop on anybody else's opinions. But screw it, Asano is doing God's work by keeping the essence of RPGs alive. One like equals one defense against the trolls in the comments. But I like Call of Duty better! Activision's the best! What about Halo? So Asano and his team rose to prominence with the Bravely series. Honestly, we don't really want to spend too much time here because in our humble opinions, it's their weakest franchise. But it is important when we look at them as a whole and their history. Think like DS turn-based combat that despite some flaws does have some pretty incredible gameplay. But it's what Asano has achieved on the Switch that really gets it going. So we're going to focus on that. HD 2D mother <laughs> Unreal Engine 5 looks insane and all, but have you guys seen this one? Aiming for hyper-realistic graphics is all well and good, but it'll be forgotten in a few years in favour for an even more realistic style. Truly unique art direction is timeless. HD 2D is timeless. It's actually super hard for us to put into words just how much we love the HD 2D engine and the art it is capable of producing. We understand it's not everyone's cup of tea, and if it's not yours, well, you're probably gonna disagree with the whole premise of this video. Sorry, but pixel art, man. Oh, there's just something about it that just speaks to the both of us. And HD 2D is like pixel art on crack. Octopath Traveler 2 is the latest game to use the style. It released like last week and Tom's currently obsessed with it. He was up until like 5am last night playing it. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button if you're interested in that game or if you just like pixel art in general because I have a feeling that Tom's definitely going to want to talk about it. You know it. Review Inbound next week. Get hyped for it. But here's a sneak peek. It's a must play game. Like it is really good. Anyway, the first game to introduce us to the HD 2D engine was actually the first Octopath Traveler, which was released only like five years ago. Those guys at Square Enix do like to keep busy. For us, and I'm sure many others, this is what really put Asano on our radar, and it really started the team down the path that has led to them being the best today. Octopath is in many ways an ode to the classic RPGs of the 90s. But this engine, man, oh, it really brings things into the modern era with its incredible particle effects and beautiful HD backgrounds. Square was very quick to trademark the term HD 2D after Octopath released, and it is no surprise why. This absolute gem of a game has now sold over 3 million units. And just another quick preview of next week's video. Number two is even better. 
Now, what to do with this beautiful game engine we've created? Well, we don't think that Square Enix really foresaw Octopath being such a success because apparently the answer was to wait four years to release anything that utilizes it again. You know, average game development time. But that's okay because us fans have been eating very well with a consistent stream of games coming out since mid last year. Team Asano has been busy on multiple projects since Octopath, so Square obviously has faith in them and their engine now, and rightly so. They are the best at what they do. Their next release, Triangle Strategy, was actually in our list of top five RPGs on the Switch. That's how much we loved this game. In that video, it represented both the HD 2D art style and the strategy or tactical RPG subgenre. Man, video games are just as bad as music sometimes, aren't they? Metal, death metal, melodic death metal, extreme blackened death metal, can we get like a brutal death tactical role playing game? Next. And Tom's got distracted again. <laughs> what? <laughs> so Triangle Strategy took the HD 2D engine and put it to use in a slightly different genre that works just as well. The team got in a different writer, Naoki Yamamoto, known for their work on the Final Fantasy VII remake, and it's here that they really hit their stride with their storytelling. Don't get us wrong, ever since Bravely Default, the stories have been good, but this title really raised the bar. We did do a full review on Triangle, so click the end video link or check the topped pinned comment afterwards if you're interested. We know there's been a lot of tactics games released recently, but if there's like one to try out from the past like three years, it is 100% this one. It is hands down the best. So now we've moved the HD 2D engine in a bit of a different direction. But what else can it do? Well, it's actually pretty obvious and Square Enix ain't no idiots. If you're channeling the energy of the golden years, then why not revisit them? Let's let our favorite team try their hands at a remake. And didn't they just pick a doozy for their first attempt. Live Alive. Apparently the higher ups had a whole list of games that they were considering for potential remakes and Live Alive was chosen specifically by Asano despite there being some more obvious choices on the table. Honestly once you've played the game it's no surprise why he was so drawn to this one. Not only can you draw comparisons between Live Alive's eight playable characters and Octopath, but it's also an incredibly unique experience, even still almost 30 years later. The best part though, is that Team Asano is the reason that almost all of us outside of Japan were able to play this game for the first time. The original wasn't released outside of its home country, and yeah, there was fan translations available, but they're inaccessible to like 99.9% .9 of people. We like to think we're pretty knowledgeable when it comes to the old video games, eh? And we hadn't even heard of Live Alive. It's actually pretty crazy because Live Alive's influence is huge. Takashi Takeda, the director, went on to work on Chrono Trigger afterwards, and the song Megalovania from Undertale is kind of a ripoff of a song from Live Alive called Megavania. Takeda is also given special thanks in the credits for Octopath 2, so it's safe to say that Asano admires him. Despite all this though, there's no doubt that Live Alive was a niche choice. Almost like a passion project for the team. But it undoubtedly proved how useful and how beautiful the HD 2D engine can be. Up until last week, it was by far the best that the engine had looked. Bringing SNES era games into the modern age, Square isn't done with this idea yet though. They have a plethora of incredible games from that era that would fit perfectly into what this team is doing. The next remake in the works for Team Asano is Dragon Quest III, undoubtedly a bigger and in a business sense more important project. It'll be the next substantial Dragon Quest release after the success of XI, so I'm sure that expectations are high. They're definitely high for us anyway. Yeah, dude, we've only seen like a short little snippet of this project, but ever since it was announced, I have been hyped. Like, give it to me now. I want it. I want it, I want it now. Mm -hmm. Team Asano and the Dragon Quest team were actually consolidated into what's now known as the Creative Business Unit 2. 
That's mainly just some like corporate BS and doesn't really affect us a lot as fans. But it does mean that these guys have been working closer now than they ever have done before. So let's go. This remake is gonna be sick. Unfortunately, no one's perfect, even our Lord and Savior, Mr. Asano. We can't really make this video if we don't acknowledge the team's blunders. With this higher volume of works, it was bound to happen sooner or later. Along with the Dragon Quest team, Square's mobile division was also consolidated into the creative business unit too, and we blame them for leading our beloveds down the wrong path. Yes, Team Asano has had a hand in creating a mobile game. Or two. Or two. Two. <laughs> Look, there's nothing inherently wrong with a mobile game, but these two kind of suck. Various Daylife not only has the most boring title for a video game <laughs> ever in existence, like what were they thinking? Various Daylife, man? It sounds like errands yeah like it sounds like going on errands and honestly that's like pretty much what you do <laughs> it's just like underwhelming in general it's the most simple a jrpg can get and i guess it's fine to play on the toilet every now and then but that's just it it's just fine you know and then there's a mobile octopath Champions of the Continent. Now, this one actually showed some promise, but gacha games are a blight and we do not support them at all. It's okay for your favorite things to have some missteps every now and then though. You know, look at Zelda 2. That game's not exactly good. But all of this pretty much brings us up to date with Team Asano from Square Enix. We did skip over Bravely Second and Bravely Default 2, Mainly because we haven't played them though, so sorry if they're your favourites, but we're all about the Octopaths, baby! <laughs> we'll dive head first into Octopath 2 next week, we promise, but Team Asano is the best they've ever been right now. What's next though? Well, I'm glad you asked, because Square Enix also asked you. In mid-Jan, they posed two questions to their fans on their website. Number one, which genre would you like to see Team Asano develop? And two, what kind of games would you like to see remade or remastered in the future? Square is clearly only just getting started here and we are so excited for what's to come. Personally, we'd like to see Asano try their hand at a 2D platformer maybe, or possibly like a farming sim, something akin to Stardew Valley maybe? Can you imagine Stardew in HD 2D? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Laura can apparently. How is it, Laura? How is it in your head? It's great. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> Weirdly sexual, apparently. <laughs> Who knew? And as for remakes, everybody just looks straight at Chrono Trigger. There are no results for this poll so far, but it definitely seemed to be the most common answer among fans. What do you guys think though? Honestly, if they just made more originals and forgot about the remakes entirely, we wouldn't be upset about it. At this point, they have our utmost trust. Just keep being you. <laughs> you guys have a lovely rest of your day or night or whatever it is for you right now. If you want some more some kind of content, go check us out on Twitch and Twitter. Links in the description below. And until next week, peace. I can give you my body, but I'm not sure that you want me. Sure you want me. Wow.